And don't get me started on the lingering gazes on, on, Hello dears, Natalie Luck here with episode 28 of Write the Story, where I give you a writing prompt out of this book and the 10 words to include in your writing prompt. And you have a thousand words, or I try to stay around 400 words because that's what roughly the space that I have in the book allows me to. If this is your first time doing flash fiction, I recommend no time limit whatsoever. You can outline or you can just go straight into drafting and editing, what have you. Personally, what I do is I give myself five, 10 minutes to outline, and then I give myself about 20 minutes to write the story. But as a mom, sometimes I don't get that time. It's, <laughs> it might be broken up a little bit. Let me go ahead and give you episode 28's writing prompt. The problems of celebrities. The words to include are tabloid, existence, dolphin, bunker, surgery, parade, chase, master, smash, possum. Now with this story, I definitely had some fun. I had some struggles. I will tell you the three words that I struggled the most with to incorporate in my outline was chase, possum, and smash. Luckily, I got there. But let me just go ahead and tell you how my outline went. The number one problem that I thought of with problems for celebrities is the sheer fact that everything they do, they say, even before they were famous, is put out there for the world to see. And originally, I had this main character, a celebrity, to, I had them, they did something that when they were like 16 or 15 or something like that. But when I wrote the story, I actually didn't set a time frame to it. But that's where I was headed with this story. The words specifically in the outline, what I did was I imagine tabloid was the first one. And I imagine the tabloid slamming down on the coffee table. I didn't have this part figured out. Some of the words, I knew they were going to be said, but I didn't know if it was going to be an internal thought of the main character because I already decided on first person or if it was going to be an outward dialogue. I couldn't decide, but I did go with the sheer existence warrants an expose like a dolphin in an aquarium. So that's how I used existence and dolphin. Then I, I threw in practically stay in a bunker until this has blown over. And this is where I pegged that it was going to be a surgery to get breast reduction when she, when the main character was 16. She was had breast reduction surgery at 16. Now, if anybody knows surgeries, most surgeries don't happen until after you're 18. So you know for her to get a surgery at 16, it was a severe case of where she probably medically needed it. But here's the thing, taking that is why was that a problem? And it's because she promotes a self-love image. It's part of her brand, as the publicist says. But now, because this is, has come out, because someone dug in her past, now there's a parade, so there's the other word, of paparazzi on her front door. And the poet is like, don't worry, I'm a master, next word, of damage control. It's one of the changes. I said, lie low until the next story pops up for them to chase, meaning the paparazzi. I ended up not using chase in exactly in that sense. I still had the paparazzi chase, but I did change that a little bit. So I'll count that as a change. And then I finally figured out the smash. Smash back a shot of of liquid courage, of alcohol. Yeah, point to make, when she smashes back the shot, she thinks to herself, I'm not gonna play possum. Like she's not gonna just roll over and let the paparazzi do this. I already pictured this and I think this is gonna be, this is my favorite line, even in my outline and it didn't change. But she walks out to a strobe of cameras and a waterfall of her name. I really like that. Uh, and I think I fine-tuned it a little bit better in the actual story. Out of these words, the only word that did change, and it's not even a full change, was chase. Really? I consider that good. I feel like this story was pretty fleshed out. 
Now, let me read you episode 28 story. The tabloid echoes through the room when Jerry tosses it on my coffee table. The bold letters of fake plastered across my face. This is completely against your self-love brand. Why in the hell did you never tell me about this? I could have headed this off, Jerry says. I stared down the tabloid, my gaze penetrating its pages. Here I was, once again, like a dolphin in an aquarium. My sheer existence warranting the microscope I was put under. There's a parade of paparazzi outside your door and all you're doing is treating this place like a bunker. Jerry's words sliced through my thoughts. You're lucky I'm a master at damage control. If you do exactly as I say, the public will be chasing the next story in no time. I snap up. Jerry steps back. I'm not going to play possum. I did nothing wrong and I would get the breast reduction surgery again. I dealt with years of back pain, never being able to breathe when I lay on my back and don't get me started on the lingering gazes on my chest from strangers. I loved myself before the surgery and I love myself now. I walk past Jerry to the wet bar. Shot glass in hand, I pour the highest alcohol proof liquor I have. The liquid courage smashes through my lips and burns down my throat. Let's do this, I say. I open the front door to a strobe of lights and a waterfall chorus of my name. I really love this story. I mean, it's even better than what I thought it would be from even writing the outline. And I was getting passionate when I was writing the outline. I really enjoy the main character. She is witty, brave. I would I would give her a hug for how brave she's being. She's standing by what she's done. Like, and not letting people push her in a corner and say that she's wrong or bad and everything. Like, I think it is beautiful because this, a lot of culture is, and I feel like we are getting away from it a little bit, but it's if you did something bad now or even years ago before you even had your frontal cortex developed, you did something bad, society shames you. And they make you feel like you must carry a sword of Damocles over your head for the rest of your life because you did something bad. Where apologies don't aren't enough. The, 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 you didn't apologize in the right tone. You, you tried to smirk and laugh and everything. That's how some people cope with awkwardness and feeling being put on point and uh, put on called out and stuff like they they laugh sometimes like it is it's you're not allowed to be human anymore it makes me think of the last story that i did about the on the campaign trail where xander my main character is running for a political office and his campaign manager gets on to him anytime he shows any dislike or discomfort or anything that may seem like he's not a robot and it's kind of a common theme of what we expect from celebrities. Like we forget their people. And I think that is like the main problem for celebrities is that they are not seen as people anymore. They're seen as like providing a service for the world 24 seven. Very few jobs out there that are 24 seven, but even those 24 seven jobs such as the president, the military, a lot of government jobs, uh, and even some like service, like if you think about uh, snowplow operators and that stuff, they have to be ready for the call. Nurses have to be on call. When things played out as they did in our medical field, had to stretch their hours even longer, <laughs> if you can imagine it, even they got time off to be themselves, to relax. So why are we hold people to such an impossible standard that you have to be on point at all times? I just, I don't understand it. So that's how this story evolved. So for my least favorite line in this story, it's really not a line. It's, I, I wish I had the characters interact with the room more. Luckily, I think the main character did well because she's staring at the tabloid and sees fake in bold letters right across her face. She stares that tabloid down. She stands up, she goes to the wet bar, she goes to open the front door. She does these things, but Jerry, I feel like I kind of 
had them throw the tabloid down and then I forgot about what what's Jerry doing? Are they pacing as they're going on these rants? But I should have had Jerry interact. And I think that's where I, I dropped the ball is Jerry's interaction with the environment outside slamming the tabloid. Now for my favorite line. I've already hinted that it was my favorite line and not even a hint, it was a full on, hey, this is from my outline. And let's just compare the two. Let's show a growth here, okay? In my outline, I said, walk out to strobe of cameras and waterfall of my name chanting. I didn't like the word chanting because chanting makes it seem like repeat. Um, and I didn't want that, but I like how I changed it. And, and let me know if this paints the picture for you. I opened the front door to a strobe of lights and a waterfall chorus of my name. That sounds, I think, better than what I had in my outline. We changed chanting to chorus and we said strobe of lights so that way it could be more precise. And since Jerry has said there was a parade of paparazzi outside your front door and there's really not that much space between that line and this final line, I feel it is understood immediately what she just walked into. I'm not tooting my own horn because I know this this line maybe could work some more and be even stronger and better. But I feel like this line right here is the epitome of showing instead of telling. Because the reason this is showing and of as I tell you that she's walking out her front door, it's you feel the emotion, the tension, the the like as if you hit a wall of of paparazzi of noise or something like think when you like go into a building and it has that rush of air right as you walk through the front door and you're like stunned for a second it's like walking into that where there was stillness and now there's a rush and i feel like the readers with this line versus me saying i walked out to the paparazzi this line as it is now, you feel that rush, that whoo, like impact. And I think that's why I really like this, this line so much, is that it gives the reader the feeling. There's a difference between knowing how the MC feels and then as a reader feeling what the MC feels. And I feel this line helps the reader feel what our MC feels. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Flash Fiction today, and I hope you find enjoyment in the rest of your day, your week, your month, and your year.